In other words, if the resulting products are no longer sold, the craftsmen who are involved in the processes will all collapse together. That is exactly what is happening in Japan today. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. When you see a katana, you might think that one craftsman makes the whole sword. But actually, the swordsmiths will only make the blade, and everything else is created by other professionals. In fact, there are seven different craftsmen needed to create a single katana, including the swordsmith. Who are they, and why do we need so many? So today, as a Japanese katana trainee, I'll explain about the six craftsmen that take part in the katana making process, except for the swordsmith who makes the blade. Also, at the end of the video, I will explain why so many people share the work of creating a katana. Actually, not just the katana, but almost every Japanese traditional craft work is made by multiple craftsmen working together. By watching this video, you will find out why Japan developed such a culture, as well as the troubles it's causing in the modern world today. By the way, I've only done studying about katana and Japanese crafts work, so it'd be great if you can let me know in the comments about how things in your country are or were made. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go to the next one. One, togishi, sharpener, polisher. Togishi are craftsmen who polish the blade made by the swordsmiths in order to make it sharper and beautiful. The blades that this swordsmith created look very different from the katana blades that we imagine. There is no distinction between the blackness of the burnt surface and the whiteness of the blade, and the blade pattern and luster cannot be seen at all. Only after more than 10 polishing processes that take about two weeks by the professional togishi, the beautiful Japanese sword that we think of is born. In other words, the togishi is not a side character in the production of Japanese swords, but plays a very important role in determining the final value of a katana. But why do they need to train professional craftsmen to make their weapons look so beautiful in the first place? This is because, from ancient times, the katana was not just a tool, but was dedicated to the gods as one of the ritual offerings. 2. Shiroganeshi, Habaki Crafter Shiroganeshi are craftsmen who make the metal fittings that are attached just above the tsuba handguard called Habaki. There are professionals who just make these tiny fittings? To be honest, before I started studying about the katana, I was not aware of the existence of these fittings in the first place. However, this small and seemingly simple piece of metal actually plays many important roles. 1. Securely fastens the katana to the sheath. 2. To reduce the impact of strikes. 3. To balance out the appearance. First, it securely fastens the katana to the sheath. If a katana didn't have a habaki, the blade would be completely loose and would easily slip out and damage the inside of the sheath. On the other hand, if the habaki is too tight, you will not be able to pull the katana out in case of emergencies, so it must be made with extreme precision. This is where the skills of shiroganeshi are tested. Secondly, it is also said to have acted as a cushion to soften the impact of strikes in actual battles. By well protecting the base of the blade, the habaki prevents it from breaking. Finally, in addition to these practical reasons, the habaki itself comes in a variety of colors and designs and helps to balance out the overall appearance of the katana. We shouldn't underestimate them just because they are small. The next time you see a katana, please pay attention to the habaki too. 3. Sayashi, Sheath Manufacturer 
Sayashi are craftsmen who makes the sheaths to hold a katana. Each and every katana are made by hand, so there is not one alike. This means that the sheath must be custom made to fit that katana. Otherwise, many problems would happen. For example, the blade not fitting properly, the blade getting damaged in the sheath, or the blade not being able to be drawn and sheathed smoothly. The sheaths are made from magnolia wood. In the past, cedar and cypress were sometimes used, but as early as the 8th century, magnolia wood was most commonly used. The reason why magnolia wood was chosen was because it has the right amount of softness to protect the blade. It is easy to work with, has little deviation, and is suitable for preventing moisture from entering the blade. However, of course, not just any kind of magnolia tree would do. So it is also an important job for the sayashi to choose the best quality wood. 4. Tsukamakishi Handle Wrapper Tsukamakishi are craftsmen who wrap the ray skin and braided string around the tsuka, the handle of the katana. However, the tsuka is obviously not just randomly rolled up. As you can see from my katana, it requires a high level of skills. In addition to the beauty and strength of the wrapping, the tsukamakishi must be able to select the most suitable string according to the position of the mekugi pin holes and also properly select and treat the ray skin material. In some cases, minor adjustments may be made to the sheath created by the sayashi too. But why do katana need ray skin and string wrapping in the first place? They are both made to reinforce the handle to prevent it from breaking, to enhance one's grip on the katana, and to decorate the sword. Ray skin is especially easy to process, looks equally beautiful as leather, and even has a spiritual meaning that the fierceness of the string rays gives the sword more power. For the string wrapping, materials such as silk braids and cow leather are often used. There are many different ways of string wrapping too, and they each have a great difference in appearance. 5. Nurishi Lacquer Painter Nurishi are craftsmen who apply lacquer on the outside of the sheaths. Lacquer is the sap that can be collected from the lacquer trees. The reason why we apply it on the sheets is very simple, because of its excellent waterproofing effects. Since katana blades are very weak against moisture and will rust very easily, lacquer coating the sheath was developed as a way to keep the blade from deteriorating even when they are kept in a wooden sheath. However, the lacquer is not just simply applied once, but is applied in multiple layers to completely protect the sheath and blade. To apply the lacquer evenly and neatly in layers requires a complex process and a high level of technical skill, and is not something that can be done by amateurs. 6. Kinkoshi and Tsubakoshi Metal Fittings and Tsuba Manufacturer Kinkoshi are craftsmen who make various exterior metal fittings for katana, such as menuki, Kozuka, Kogai, and Fuchigashira. There are some craftsmen called Tsubakoshi who specialize on creating the Tsuba handguards, but in many cases, the Kinkoshi make the Tsuba too. Why do they need professionals just for these tiny pieces of decorations? This is because they were important items that represented the status and authority of that katana owner. They especially developed during the peaceful Edo period, when katana became more of a tool that represented the samurai class and less of a weapon. But of course, they all have practical reasons for their existence too. So let's take a closer look at that. 1. Menuki Menuki are these decorations that are on both sides of the tsuka handle wrapped inside the string wrapping. Originally, the menuki was meant to hold the mekugi pin in its place. However, throughout history, they gradually became separated. Now the menuki not only gives the handle a better grip, but it's also a beautiful metal fitting that brightly colors the handle. 2. Kozuka 
Kozuka is a small knife-like item that can be attached to the back of the sheath. It was used like a paper knife or cutter knife today. There are sometimes scenes in historical dramas and movies where people throw the kozuka to attack. But in reality, they are not very practical because the handle side is unevenly heavy. 3. Kogai Kogai is a grooming tool attached to the front side of the sheath. They were used as a comb to scratch one's head without ruining the hairstyle, and sometimes even as chopsticks. I think you can imagine from how practical Kozuka and Kogai are that the samurai had their katana by their side at all times. Finally, the Tsuba handguards actually have practical reasons too, other than its beauty as a decoration. 1. To balance the weight of the sword. 2. To protect the hand. 3. To make it easier to draw the sword. By adding extra weight to the handle side, it balances the sword better, making it easier to swing. Next, it also protects the hand from the opponent's attack, and prevents the hand from slipping towards the blade when stabbing. Lastly, I believe you've seen anime characters putting their thumbs on the tsuba to draw the sword. But in real life too, it made it easier to pull the katana out safely. Now, you have learned about these six craftsmen who work together in the production of katana. However, as I mentioned at the beginning, dividing each katana process is not limited to katana making, but also for tea ceremony utensils, ceramics, lacquerware, textiles, etc. What benefits did the system of division of labor have? 1. Improvement of production efficiency. 2. Improvement of technology in specialized fields. 3. Preservation of technology. First of all, dividing each labor process allows craftsmen to concentrate on a single task, which helps them to produce higher quality products faster and in greater quantities. Also, by focusing on one thing, they were able to evolve their skills of expertise beyond limits. Finally, the division of labor can help to preserve the skills and techniques. If one person is in charge of the whole process, if that person dies for some reason, the entire process will be lost. However, this risk can be minimized by dividing the labor. However, this system naturally has its weaknesses. Since each craftsman only has a fragmented skill set, it is difficult to apply it to other fields. In other words, if the resulting products are no longer sold, the craftsmen who are involved in the processes will all collapse together. That is exactly what is happening in Japan today. And we are starting to lose many of the precious skills of craftsmanship. Perhaps the division of labor is a system that is not suitable for the modern age. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced the six craftsmen other than the swordsmen that makes the katana together. 1. Togishi Togishi are craftsmen who polish the sword made by the swordsmith in order to make it sharp and beautiful. 2. Shiroganeshi Shiroganeshi are craftsmen who make the metal fittings that are attached just above the tsuba handguard called habaki. 3. Sayashi Sayashi are craftsmen who make the sheaths to hold the katana. 4. Tsukamakishi Tsukamakishi are craftsmen who wrap raised skin and braided strings around the tsuka, the handle of a sword. 5. Nurishi Nurishi are craftsmen who apply lacquer on the outside of the sheaths. 6. Kinkoshi Tsubakoshi Kinkoshi and Tsubakoshi are craftsmen who make various exterior metal fittings for swords such as menuki, kozuka, kogai, and tsuba handguards. The system of division of labor has multiple benefits, such as 1. Improvement of production efficiency 2. Improvement of technology in specialized fields 3. Preservation of technology However, there is also a risk of the craftsmen collapsing together if the resulting products are not sold well, and this is exactly what's happening in Japan today. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. 
If this video helped you to enjoy looking at Katana even more, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub-channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. There's actually quite a few activities in Japan where you can go and meet a katana swordsmith who are making the blades. Yeah. But to be honest, I really do need to do more research, but I hardly ever found any activities where, for example, you get to meet a tsukamakishi or a togishi or you know things like that i believe it's because it's very difficult to imagine first of all what you're going to be doing and many people first of all don't know about their existences properly but you know because i am a big fan of katana i really do i don't know if there are any craftsmen living in kyoto where i where i live right now but if there are any craftsmen living in kyoto it'd be great if i can visit them and see how all the other procedures of the katana are done i think I especially would love to see how the uh, kinkoshi make the metal fittings. Yeah, because they're so small, but they're really, really beautiful and detailed, right? It would be great if I can actually meet a real kinkoshi. And I really hope uh, he or she will let us take, take a video of their work.